Hello guys and welcome today to Marion Webster Vocabulary Builder. Seems like a very old book. And let's get this started with. Today we're doing unit number 25. Let's get this started with. Alright, so we have eight roots and they're mainly all Latin. Only two of them are Greek. So get your swords up, get your arrows ready, and let's get this started with. First off, we have this verb. Now, a verb, you might think of it as a word, like a noun word. Meaning, like, an action word, a word that means an action. However, actually, the verb itself here is a root. It actually comes from a Latin word named verbum. And verbum means word. It's a word that means word. Wow. And here we get words like verbose, proverb, as in, like, uh, it's like idioms, except this isn't it. It's like a saying that's commonly used. Like, uh, in English, there's, like, the full will will quickly part from his money and if you want to make money you have to spend money those kind of things we even have these which was used to be a very good household proverb a very popular one too I'm pretty sure it's still popular now it's waste not want not like and there are a bunch of things i could also say like a stitch in time saves nine well, usually it rhymes too look before you leap he who hesitates is lost those kind of things it's like quotes that people do and to be honest people do make these up and sometimes these proverbs actually originate from these books not this one but the ones over there not these ones these are educational books not these ones these are educational books the ones who are fictional those kind of things you even get words like verbatim and verbiage All right our second root is simil simil as actually also has a variation simul this might be a bit very, very, very familiar for you, too. We get similis, as in similar, and we also have simile, or is it simile? Yeah, it's actually simile. Simile, as in, like, a word that, it's like, basically means synonym. It basically means synonym. And we also have assimilate, simulacrum, simulacrum, I mean, and you even have simulate. Simulate. That's nice. All right, our third root is send. Send actually comes from a Latin root named scandier, which means to climb. Here we get roots like uh, transcend, his mind transcends space and time, those words. Uh, condescend, like you're condescending our family. And a descendant, well, the opposite of a descendant is ancestor. Hmm, the watchers don't really have any ancestors, do they? Uh, then they also have ascendary. Hmm. All right, our fourth root is onim. Onim basically is comes from a Greek root. Yes, our first Greek and our second to last Greek root. Here is onima, which basically means name or word. Here we get like words like antonym, eponymous, patronymic, and pseudonym. And pseudonym is basically like a fake name. It's a fake name, like so when offers trying to write something, but they're going to be biased if they don't use a fake name, then they use a fake name, and that fake name is called a pseudonym. Nice. A bunch of Nancy Drew stories, a bunch of Nancy Drew stories are written under a sin, under a pseudonym, and Dave Hilke is not a pseudonym, to be honest, but I highly doubt that's actually his real name. Aaron Hunter, the author of Warriors, is actually a pseudonym of like seven people, including one of those people, including Twenty Sutherland, which is not a which is not a pseudonym. It's a real person. So yeah, at least nowadays we, they let women. They are they're unbiased by with women. All right, our fifth root is scrib, as in script, and here it actually comes from a Latin root scribier, which basically means to write. Typical scribes, and here we actually get words like scribes, conscription. Ah, people hate being conscripted unless they're like people who have no chance getting into the army. And when they did get conscripted, most of the time they're just forced to do it. Like conscription is like forced to join an army or something like that. And here we get words like circumscribe, inscription, and proscribe. Uh all right. Our sixth root is fall, as in faller, and this basically means to deceive. You heard me right, to deceive. So here you get words like fallacy, fallacious, fallibility, and infallible. All right, our seventh root is solu, as in solvier. Actually comes from a Latin root named solvier, and this basically means to loosen. Uh, here you get words like soluble, absolution, dissolution, and resolute. Our eighth root is hydra, which basically means water. Here we get like hydraulic, dehydrate, hydroelectric, 
and hydroponics. Mm. Hydro, it's, there's no O actually in the original root. It's just H-Y-D-R. All right. Finally, we have Greek and Latin borrowing. Here again, words like Aegeus, Charisma, Ego, Esos, Hubris, Id. Apparently, it's Id, not Id. And Librodo and Trauma. All right. So my Latin and Greek, as I've already explained to you, is pretty weak. So I'm going to have to explain to this with you of this. All right. Aegeus. This basically means something that protects or defends something, like a shield, like... Uh, you know that Coldplay song where like, Be my mirror, my sword, my shield. They could have said, Be my sword, be my mirror, my sword, my Aegeus. That doesn't really sound as good, so I guess we'll stick with shield. Alright, then we have charisma, which basically means a very extraordinary gift for leadership that actually attracts popular, popular support and enthusiasm. Nice. Alright. Next, we have ego, as in like a sense of confidence and satisfaction in oneself. Nice. Uh, we also have ethos, which is like the features, the attitudes, moral codes, or basic beliefs, as in like that defines a person or something. Like the ethos of something is like you know, it's like a way you can just go ahead and try to convince someone with your moral ways. Like technically, pathos, but ethos is you basically. Uh, the opposite way, you're just basically trying to get a big bun brands, big brands to go ahead with this. All right, then we have hubris, which basically means a very unreasonable or unjustified pride or self-importance. Like, I'm the best, I'm the worst, I'm the best, I'm the worst, those kinds of things. All right, next we have id, which basically means the part of a person's unconscious mind that relates to his or her own needs and desires. Okay, so here it actually means like his own id often scared him, especially when it's like a sudden violent attack happens or like an impulse will come out of nowhere, which is kind of nice. And next we have libido, which apparently it means actual drive in psychoanalytic theory, energy that is deprived from primitive biological urges and is usually goal oriented. Basically means what monkeys do. Monkey see, monkey do. Bro. Okay, and last but not least, we have trauma, which is like a very serious injury to the body and an abnormal psychological state caused by mental or emotional stress or actual physical injury. Yikes. And that's pretty much it. So hopefully you guys actually did learn something from this episode. I really hope you guys will learn something else in other episodes. Until then, shout out. Peace. Bye-bye.